Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. If you like it that way, or Jamming with Jason. <laughs> I like to have fun at the beginning. All right, here we go. Well, today we are going to be talking about an interesting topic. You know, uh, most people do enough just to get by, right? So most people are just doing enough to get by. But today I want to talk about the difference that a little extra effort can actually make. Because the fact that you're listening to this podcast means you don't want to just be average. You're a high achiever and you're trying to do better. And so we're going to get in and talk today about some of the things you can do and how a little extra effort can make all the difference. So let's get going. Hi, I'm Jason Mefford, and you're in the right place to start transforming your career and life with this podcast. I've been in the trenches as an executive leader, and now I'm an executive coach and confidential advisor to executives all over the world. I use a multidisciplinary approach to improve learning that drives transformation by getting to the root cause in a practical, no-nonsense way. I love learning and sharing what makes people tick. You get both education and entertainment, since learning shouldn't be boring, right? But that's enough about me. This podcast is a combination of intuitive leadership, neural influence, and mental mastery to take your career and life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting to improve yourself, develop stronger relationships professionally and personally, make quicker, better decisions, and become a more effective leader, then of course, this podcast is for you because you are going to learn how to manage emotions in yourself and others, avoid burnout, stress, and anxiety, master your mind, get people to listen and take action, and become a lifelong learner. And when you do that, you will have a positive mental attitude, executive leadership presence, and the skills to know exactly what to say and do in any situation. I'm glad you're here. So, let's get started. All right, so today, uh, <laughs> I wanna kinda go a little different direction. I, uh, I was reminded of a couple of experiences that I had uh, when I was younger, when I was a teenager. And those just came into my mind this week. So I wanted to talk about that with you. Because the reality is most people just do enough to get by. Okay, they just do enough to get by. That's why there's average people, right? But again, as I said, the fact that you're listening to this podcast means that you're a high achiever. You're somebody that doesn't want to be just average, right? You want to be better than average. And so let's get in and talk about some things that you can actually do. Because as I said, right, most people, you know, if, if they work in a job, they're, you know, typically here in the United States, it's a 40 hour work week. And so most people put in a 40 hour work week. That's what they do. That's the average of what people do. And that's what people that are just getting by do. Uh, you know, when you think about continuing professional education, most certifications require 40 hours a year. And so people that are just getting by just do 40 hours of CPE. And that's it. They do enough just to get by, check the box, and they're done, and they move on. And this isn't just, you know, in, in the hours that we're working or our continuing professional education, but this is in a lot of different areas in our life, okay? So I'm going to talk, I'll, I'll talk about those a little bit uh, because they're, they're relatable, they're easy to kind of understand, but what I want you to do is, as you're listening to this, to start think about, start thinking about some of the different parts in your life and where you can actually give a little extra effort. Because what I'm going to tell you is a little extra effort over what most people do can have a huge, huge impact in the results 
that you get. Okay. So the first story, um, you know, I remember when I was when I was little, you know, grew, grew up in the 70s and 80s. And uh, in the United States, we had a really rough time in the late 70s. Uh, we had huge inflation. Uh, we had issues with the housing market. And since my father was a general contractor, he built houses and remodeled houses. Uh, we had a tough time as a family in the late 70s. And so my mom ended up having to go back to work. Um, she used to just, you know, stay home, take care of me and my younger brother. Uh, my older siblings were all already out of the house. Uh, but there came a time when she actually needed to go back to work. Now, um, early in my parents' marriage, she had, had worked, had been a professional before. Um, you know, she did what a lot of moms do, took some time off to raise the kids. Um, and then because of the financial um, responsibilities that we had, um, she needed to go back to work to help support our family. Um, and like I said, late 70s, early 80. Uh, and uh, I remember her, you know, my mom, she, she took a, an administrative assistant job. So she was kind of the secretary uh, for uh, some executives in the company that she worked for. And I remember, you know, one time as, as we were talking, it was sometime when I was in my teenage years, and I remember her sitting me down and saying, you know, because I was talking to her a little bit about she had a very regular routine. She would leave the house at exactly the same time in the morning. Uh, she would get home at about exactly the same time, right? So as a latchkey kid, I knew exactly when mom was going to be home. I had to have my homework done and my chores done before she got home. And, and I remember, again, it was, it was one of those times when, when it was just the two of us and we were talking and she was trying to impart some knowledge to me, which actually worked because I still remember it today, uh, you know, probably 35, 40 years later. And I remember her telling me, she said, Jason, if, if you know, when, when you get a job, show up to work 15 minutes early and stay 15 minutes late. And I kind of thought, well, okay, that's kind of different. Mom, why are you, why are you saying that? Because you're not getting paid for it. You're still clocking in at, you know, 7.30, I think was when she started and she left it at 4.30 or something like that, right? Uh, but she said, you know, most people show up right on time or a little bit late. You know, they might show up at, at eight o'clock or 8.05 or 7.59. And that's fine, right? I mean, most people do that. Most people leave at 4.59 or five o'clock as well, right? But I remember her telling me those 15 minutes that you, that you spend getting to work early and staying late, your boss will see that. They will see that extra little effort uh, that you're doing. And <laughs> I'm a stickler for time, actually, and that's partly from my mother, uh, because she always used to tell me, too, if you're not early, you're late. So getting there at 8.01, you're late. And so it's better to get there at 7.45 or 7.50, because then you know you're going to be there at 8 o'clock. And you're going to meet the expectations, right? And so again, this was one of those things that she taught me early on. Show up to work 15 minutes early, leave 15 minutes later after everybody else. Now, again, I, by, by telling you this, I'm not telling you to go, you know, work a bunch of extra hours and just show up before your boss and wait and leave after the boss. I'm not telling you that. I'm just giving you some guidelines here for you to think about. Because that extra little effort that my mother put in, those 15 minutes on either side of when she had to be there, well, how did that work out for her? Well, she's, as, I, as I told you, she started off as an executive assistant uh, for one of the people in the company. When she left that job and retired, she was in charge of all of the executive assistants for that company. OK, so her extra little effort and the things that she did ended up leading to higher and higher levels of responsibility within the company. And that also equated to a higher level of pay as well. And so, again, as she told me, that little investment will end up coming back to you 
in the future. Okay. So again, well, is the, the 15 minutes isn't that much different, but it comes back. Okay. Now let me, let me share with you another example. Um, again, I was a teenager at this point and uh, I, I must have, this was a conversation that happened in a car ride home. So I, I think I must have been over at one of my friend's houses. And, uh, and so, you know, when the parents got home, his father drove me home to my house because I live several miles away. And I remember him talking to me in the car. And, and so again, here, here was this, he was a successful business person. Um, he worked for an insurance company selling um, life insurance and financial service uh, products to people. And he was very good at what he did. In fact, if I remember right, he was the uh, leader of the office of the company. It was an international company, but he was the leader of the office in, in the city where I grew up. And as we were driving home one time, he told me, he said, you know, Jason, what, do you know what the difference is between uh, salespeople in my company, those people that work 40 hours a week versus those that work 50 hours a week? And I looked at him and I'm like, what, what are you talking about, right? So again, here's a little teaching moment that Jason is getting as a teenager in the car. And he said, no, what's, what do you think is the difference between somebody who works 40 hours a week versus somebody who works 45 or 50 hours a week in my company? And I said, well, I don't know. It's, you know, 10, five, 10 hours difference, right? He said, no, the difference is two to three times the compensation level. Now, again, in his profession, the people who worked in his, the salespeople that worked for him, right? These were people that were getting commission sales. And again, he could tell, he knew those, those sales associates that worked with him that put in just enough time. They showed up, they put in their 40 hours, but that's all they did. They earned a certain amount of money. But those who were willing to go above and beyond a little bit extra, an extra five or 10 hours during that week, their sales were significantly more, so much so that they earned, like I said, two to three times as much money as the others. So if you look at that again and you think about it, okay, that's only five or 10 hours a week for two to three times the compensation. Now, again, as I told you before, I'm not encouraging you to go to work for 50 hours a week when you know the expectation is 40. And it doesn't mean putting in more time. Don't just stay at work just to put in time. Be effective and efficient in what you're doing. But here's two different examples that show the difference a little extra effort actually makes. And so again, you know, if you think about somebody who's, who's maybe doing 44 hours a week instead of 40, or people that are, that are more uh, uh, efficient and more effective in the use of that time, that little extra effort actually makes a huge difference in compensation, in upward mobility, and in other things like that as well, right? In fact, even just 1% more effort than what people around you are doing is going to help you stand out in the crowd. Now, how does this relate to you? Because again, as I told you, I'm not, I'm not telling you to show up to work really early and stay after the boss. I'm not telling you, you know, that you have to work 50 hours a week, but start thinking about in the different parts of your life. You know, again, this could be in your career. It could also be in, in different personal aspects as well. Where could you put in a little bit more effort? And I'm not talking about a lot, even as I said, 1% more of an effort than other people are, because when you do, you're going to have a huge return in that. Now, let me share another story with you, and then we're gonna, we'll end up kind of wrap, wrapping up here and probably do a quicker episode this week. I've given you a couple of examples from career, right? My mother and my, uh, my friend's uh, father as the examples. But let me tell you about somebody else too. And so if you know who 
Muhammad Ali is or Cassius Clay, right? The greatest of all time, the greatest boxer of all time. That's what he used to say, you know, I'm the greatest fighter of all of all time. I'm the greatest fighter in the world. And in fact, he was, he was heavyweight champion in boxing in the world for a long time. And, and it has been regarded as one of the best boxers of all time. Now, in order to get to be heavyweight champion of the world and be considered to be one of the best boxers in the world, do you think Muhammad Ali just showed up in the gym and did just enough to get by? No, he wouldn't have gotten to that point if he did just enough, right? And so his coaches were telling him to do certain things. He would go above and beyond that. In fact, one of the stories that I've heard, and I, I didn't get to fact check it before the podcast. So if somebody fact checks me, it's a good story anyway. Okay. But, but uh, you know, Muhammad Ali, when he would do push-ups, right? So the exercise, getting down on the ground, doing push-ups, he didn't do a specific number of push-ups. He did push-ups until he could no longer do push-ups. Now, again, I want you to think about that, right? Most boxers, even, even when I do this myself, right? I need, I need to change and become more like Muhammad Ali in this way. When I do my push-ups, I'll get down and do 25 or 30 at a time, right? I count them and then I stop. He would do push-ups until he could no longer do push-ups. So I don't know how many he would do, probably a couple hundred, right, as he was very strong, but he would continue to push himself until he could not do any more. It was that extra little bit of effort, and it, that's just one example of many of the things that he did that got him to be heavyweight champion of the world. And so again, you know, I, I told you at the beginning, the fact that you're listening to this podcast tells me that you're a high achiever. You don't want to just be average. You don't just want to fit in, do enough to get by and be like everyone else, right? You're a high achiever. You want to do more. You want to change this world. You want to improve yourself. You want to have an amazing life, right? And if that's you, and as I told you, I'm pretty sure it is because you're listening to this podcast, then here's the tip for this week is take that time and make a difference by putting in just a little extra effort than what you're required to do. If you're not sure where to do that again, like I said, think about it, you know, over the course of this week and think about, you know, where are some areas that I want to do better, that I want to grow myself? You know, if you want to learn new things, well, that means you're going to need to go get some training. You're going to need to read some books. You're going to need to go through some programs, right? And again, 40 hours a year isn't enough in today's market. In fact, I usually tell people 400 hours a year is more like what you need. And you think, holy crap, 400 hours, what? Well, I'll tell you, I do about an hour of training myself every day in either, you know, going through programs that I'm going through, listening to podcasts, reading books, doing other things, an hour a day on average of investing in your own personal development, that's the kind of idea where you're putting in that little extra effort that most people are not doing, right? But again, that's why when you go back to things like the Pareto Principle, why do 20% of the people have 80% of the wealth? Because those 20% of people are willing to do that extra little effort that the other 80% are not willing to do. So again, do you want to be in the 80% that's kind of the average and doing enough to get by? Or are you going to be in that 20% and make that little extra effort that can have such a huge, huge impact in your life. So with that, my friends, I'm signing off for this week and I'll catch you on the next episode of Jamming with Jason. See ya.